Hello. Hey, it's Tuesday and I got a wild hair. Look at my wild hair. I have this one section of hair right here. It's only on this side. I don't know why. Hey, Evie. <clears throat> Evie just woke up and she just came in here. I have this one section that's not quite long enough to go to stay in the braid. So every now and then it just comes down like this and it goes, hello. And it just goes around saying hello to everybody all day. It's like a little earring. Look at Evie. Evie. She had a little dreadlock on her back. I wasn't able to brush it out, so I had to trim her hair a little bit right there. Ooh. How you doing? Hey, you're a good girl. You just woke up. You just woke up. She's purring. Say hey, Evie. Hey. I know I stink. I need a shower. Ooh. Ooh, you stink, Mama. <laughs> I'm sweaty. I was supposed to mow the yard this evening, but we had a torrential downpour. We had a crazy thunderstorm, and it rained and rained and rained, so everything is soaked. I went to a... What? It's looking at me. Look, what do you want? You don't want to get... You want to get in my lap? You never want to get in my lap. Are you serious? Are you serious? Sometimes she just gets randomly grossed out by being petted. You want to get in my lap? Oh my God, you never get in my lap. What? She always looks mad. She has a little Godzilla face. Look at a Godzilla face. Amy, look. <laughs> Sorry. She uh, and it, she has a defective tear duct. One of her tear ducts, she was born with, um, her tear duct is messed up. So it always looks like one of her eyes is weepy. She's been like that all of her life. It's not dangerous or anything. You can just wipe it with a warm, wet paper towel periodically and, you know, clean it. And it's, yes, I'm talking about you. She's always had it all of her life. And I think that was why they had a, such a hard time finding a home for her at the shelter. She came from an animal shelter. She was born there, and she, her mom got adopted, all of her brothers and sisters, and she was there for five months, and nobody wanted her. We went there to look at a different cat. Sorry, am I doing it wrong? She's still purring. I must not be doing it too wrong. Ow! And then she, she makes biscuits, and it hurts. Evie, you don't need to do that for a long time. Thank you. Quit making biscuits. So anyway, she had been there for about five months, and we went there to see this other cat, this kitten, and they were really pushing her. They said, oh, you know what, that kitten you came to see, she's great, but this cat, and we still joke about it, they said, she's perfect for your family. She's so calm. She'd be great. I mean, that cat, the kitten that you came here to see, she's okay too, but this is the cat for you because she is just so calm. Or she was not calm. We got her home. She ran around. She, I mean, she wasn't upset. She just, she had never lived on a surface that she could get traction on. So we took her home and this was back when we were still living in the apartment and we had carpet in the living room and in the bedrooms and she could get a grip on the carpet and she would just race from room to room. Little crazy cat, little five month old crazy cat. She's not pregnant. She's just a chonk. She's my chonk. I'm supposed to be restricting her food intake and it's not working out too well because she ends up eating everybody else's food but uh get comfortable she's <laughs> you're making biscuits again you're making biscuits look up here see i got my fresh soresto collar the other day and i felt like i had been done dirty all i had to do is take off the every eight months you have to put, replace the soresto uh flea collars and whenever I replace a collar on her, she acts like I have just tried to murder her. I mean, she she won't get she won't let me get near her for the rest of the day. No, so I had to remove the old collar and put the new one on. It took all of like twenty seconds, and she just oh, she was traumatized all day. Like I don't want you anywhere near me. She wouldn't even let me give her any treats or anything. She was just no, I don't want anything from you. You've you've done me wrong. You did me dirty. I did Boop's collar, and she forgot about it in two seconds. She was fine. Um, I have not done pumpkins yet. 
pumpkin usually the best way to, to do a collar on her that I found is I get her into this room right here I'm sitting on the side of the tub and I shut the closet door and I have a door right there there's a little a little side room for the, the toilet is like right there shut that door shut the double doors so she's basically trapped in here with me and uh, I have her collar in here and I just that way she can't get away and I can sort of get a hold of her a little bit better and once she realizes she can't escape, she just kind of accepts it. She's just kind of like, okay, fine, whatever. You're just so happy tonight. You're just so happy. She want to get back in my lap? Yeah. You're so happy making biscuits. That hurts, Evie. <laughs> that hurts. Why don't you just lay down? I'm not going to get any fluffier. You can't fluff me up, cat. And that, that's thin material, Kitty. Just lay down. I don't want you picking my high-dollar Walmart Lycra pants. <laughs> I paid all of $12 for these pants now. I've got to treat them right. Will you decide where you want to be? I already forgot what I wanted to tell you. Uh oh, <clears throat> speaking of cats, um, I wanted to give you a little update on Wally. And I'm going to try to do a little video montage of clips but you know you watch these channels like what is it the dodo where they show these people rescuing cats and I swanny I think some of it's fake the product you know the, all the video they manage to get of these animals that they rescue and it's all it looks like how do you always have somebody there to to get video of all this while you capture this animal you, you just happen to be driving home and you saw this dog in the rain or there was this cat and it was stuck in a pipe and you just happen to have somebody there to, to video make a video of you getting it out I'm not saying it's all fake but I swear I watch some of these videos and they have so much video of some of these rescues that I almost wonder like and I think some of them and I'm not saying the dodo's fake I don't know she will not be denied like you will pay attention to me woman what do you want Evie She's normally not like this. She's, well, get in my lap then. Dang. She keeps getting in and out of my lap. I think I'm talking too much and it's stressing her out. She wants me to shut up. She's still purring though, even though she looks mad. <laughs> she always looks mad. She always looks mad. Looks like Godzilla. That's okay. So happy. <laughs> Cat. <laughs> and back out of my lap she goes. She'll get settled down in a minute. Every now and then she gets affectionate like that and she just, I don't know. She just wanders around. Hey, I know you're here. I know you're here. You're all right. So, do you want a lap or not? Do you want a lap? Here. Ugh, no, I don't want a lap. What was I saying? Shit. Okay. Um. So, I think some of these supposed rescues are not real. I mean, I don't see how you get that much good, like, production quality video of these rescues. How are you, how are you getting video of all these that, you know, you just happened upon this animal and, oh, my cameraman was with me and they got great footage of the rescue. Really though? And then you have all this other footage at the vet and you, I just can't imagine asking my vet, do you mind if I've come back there and just make a video of everything you do? I think my vet would say, nah, I don't believe we're doing that. You actually, at my vet, since COVID, you can't go back there unless you have special permission. They want you to stay in your car. Like, they won't even let you wait inside. You have to wait in the car, and they will call you when they have your animal ready, and then they will, like, meet you at the door, and you can make your payment. You give them the card. Like, they don't want you in there at all. I think it's relaxed a little bit, but for over two years, that's the way it was at the vet. Like, you cannot come in here. So I'm just wondering how the hell are they getting all this video at the vet? Maybe maybe some vets aren't like that. I don't know. But mine is still very much like, mm -mm, no, you're not coming in here. And you're certainly not going back there. You're gonna wait in you're gonna wait in the car. And we will call you when we want you to come back in. Anyway, 
I don't know how much video I'm going to be able to get of it, um, but the other day I, I, I said I was going to have to make all these phone calls. I did make all my phone calls. I feel really good about it. And one of the phone calls I was going to make was to the vet to ask them, you know, I have this cat who's not totally tame. Like he's, he's scared to death to, you know, like he's very skittish. You can't make sudden moves around him or he'll run away. You can't make loud noises or he'll run away. Um, do you have like a sedative or something I could give him to get him in a, in a cat carrier to bring him in? And they said, no, we don't do that. Um, so I said, well, do you have any suggestions? And they said, well, you could get a, a trap, you know, one of the, the animal, one of the humane traps, you know, you go in there and it shuts the door. And at first I thought, oh, I don't want to do that. That sounds awful. But then I got to thinking about it and I know this cat, like I know Wally really well. He's been coming here now for whatever, two months. I know this cat and I can play out in my mind how it would go if uh, like say I got the cat carrier out. I There is no way in hell I could get him in, I couldn't get him in that cat carrier. There's no way in hell, even with my kids helping me, there's no way in hell he would go in that cat carrier. No, he would probably scratch my arm off if I tried to get him in there. He is so terrified of enclosed spaces. I hate doing this to him, but I got to do it. I got it. It's got to be done. It's not going to be fun no matter when I do it. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and call the vet and I'm going to ask about the sedative. Well, first I wasn't able to get through and that's one of the problems with this vet. I love this vet. I really do. They're really great. But for some reason, their phone lines don't always work. I think it's something with like AT&T or something. It's not them because they've mentioned it before. Sometimes their phones just like go down. Like they just don't work and all you ever get is a busy signal. Like they don't, they, they said sometimes we'll go all day and not get any calls because the phones just are not working and they have been a real pain in the butt trying to get it, you know, sorted out. But apparently it's still a problem because I called numerous times and all I ever got was a busy signal. So I thought, well, I'm just going to drive out there. I had to go to Costco anyway. That was my other errand. I wanted to go get my sunglasses tightened up at Costco. And I did that too. And uh, I thought, I'll just go by the vet while I'm out and ask them. So I went by there and they said, yeah, we don't do sedatives. You know, sorry, you're just going to have to find a way to get him in like a trap. She's back. She wandered off into the bathroom and then she came back to stare at me. She's purring. He's purring. Hey, hey, good kitty. <laughs> I got a cat hair on me. It's tickling my nose. Cat hair everywhere. I am constantly sweeping up, vacuuming up cat hair. <laughs> it's just part of life. Um, so anyway, they said, well, you can try a humane trap. You know, like one of the, the metal traps, you know, with the, it has a little thing in it and the door that falls down, you know. And at first I said, no, I don't want to do that. I, oh, my God, I don't want to do that. So they said, well, you could just try to get him in the cat carrier. They said, you know, you could try getting the cat carrier out, you know, put it out, you know, put a little food in there, get him used to being around it, you know, and maybe you'll be able to get him to go in there. Well, let me tell you what happened. Okay, so, well, first of all, I made an appointment. He now has an appointment. So hopefully Friday morning, if I can get him into a container of some sort and get him to the vet, they're going to check him for a microchip. If he doesn't have one, they're going to go ahead and neuter, go ahead and do the neuter, and they're going to give him his shots and, you know, just do an exam. They're going to do everything all at once, and I'll have to drop him off early for, uh, Friday morning, pick him up Friday afternoon at like 4 o'clock or something. So it's like a one day thing. So he won't have to stay overnight. It's just one one day um, if I can get him there. And they said, it's no big deal. Don't stress. You know, we understand that he's not totally tame. We have this happen all the time. We have people with feral cats and sometimes they can get them that day. Sometimes they can't. If you can't get him, don't worry about it. Just call and reschedule. We'll try again another day. Don't stress about it. But I'm stressing about it. I'm stressing because I don't, I don't like a... Uh, um, I don't like not knowing how to handle something. Like I will overthink the hell out of it until I figure out a way to deal with it. My hair is gross. So, um, she's just sitting there purring at me. You love me? Do you love me, Evie? 
Do you forgive me for putting a collar on you? She's already forgotten about it. She's just purring away. He's a good girl. And if you just stop being mean to Wally, we'd be all right. She hates Wally. She hates him. She sits and glares at him. And every now and then she'll run up to him and swat at him. And he's just like, what? She hits me. Oh. He doesn't like her. He never fights back. He just leaves. He'll just run away. Like, ah. He mean to me. Why are you so mean to him? He is not aggressive at all. He's never done anything to you. I don't like him. He doesn't belong here. <laughs> you can't sit with us. Cat, you're a mess. Sometimes she'll do that. She will just sit like this and stare at me. And she'll do it for a long time. She will just sit and look at me. And purr at me. Hey. I think she's hoping I will give her a T-R-E-A-T. -E I can't say the word. She knows what it is. I can't say that or S-N-A-C-K. She knows what that is. Or F-O-O-D. She knows all the words related to that. <laughs> She's smart. Sounds smart. I'm smart. But I always look like I'm pissed off. She has resting bitch face. <laughs> See? Look at that resting bitch face. <laughs> you're a good girl. Yeah. Well, you're going to be happy on Friday. If we can get him into a container, he won't be here all day. I don't want to do this to him. I don't want to do it, but it's got to be done. I know it's got to be done. And I have a Soresto collar for him, and I'm going to ask them if they would please just put it on him while they have him under. You know, like, can you just pop that collar on him? One less thing I got to do. They're good for eight months. So, I do. I bought, I bought a Soresto collar for him, so I have one for everybody now. Everybody will have a collar. Okay. And the cool thing is, too, the last, uh, I just bought a batch of Soresto colors. They come with little reflectors now that you can clip to them. The last batch I got didn't have those, but these do. It's really cool. Okay, so I got to thinking about it, and I thought, let's get the cat carrier out and let him check it out. Now, let me tell you what happened when I did that. I got the cat carrier out, and and he was in the, he was in, he, he was in the kitchen eating food, I, I, he turned around and I was standing there holding the cat carrier. I didn't make any sudden moves. I didn't do anything. He took one look at that cat carrier and bolted. He left and he didn't come back for several hours. He just took off at one look at that cat carrier. I thought, oh shit. I really do think he's been mistreated. I, I don't know. He took one look at that cat carrier and was gone. I didn't even get a chance to set it down. He was like, nope, I'm out of here. And he left for the like hours. He didn't come back until later in the evening. So I thought, okay, well, that might not work. I didn't try it again. I put the cat carrier just completely away. Because when he came back, he came in like, do you still have that thing? He wouldn't come in at first. Normally, he just walks right on in. He, was, he just stood right in the door like, do you still have that? Okay, cool. And then he came in. So, I decided, all right, I think we're going to have to try one of the traps. I didn't want to do that, and I, I didn't have one. I thought, I'm not going to be able to get him in a cat carrier. He won't even get near it. And you can't pick him up. He, I don't think he's ever been picked up in his life. And I'm just not good at manhandling cats. I'm just not good at it. She just sits and stares at me. Don't you? You're a good girl. You're a good kitty. Yes, you are. Yeah, her right eyes. Um, it always looks a little weepy because of the tear duct issue, but it's not anything that can be fixed. She was just born with that. So, the cat, the the cat, the the trap arrived today, 
and I have the instructions. It's actually huge. It's, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, I may even give you suggested baits depending on what you want to catch. Now listen to this. You have baits in here for rats, weasels, chipmunks, flying squirrels, rabbit, mink, regular squirrels, muskrats, ferrets, skunks, woodchucks, porcupines, possums, stray cats, raccoons, bobcat, and nutrient rats. Damn. You know what they recommend to catch a cat? If you want to catch a stray cat, here's what you could put in the trap. Crisp bacon. Not flock, not floppy, soggy bacon. Crisp, ba crisp bacon. Fish. Fresh vegetables. Or cat food the hell you gonna put some brussels sprouts in there you think you're gonna catch a cat with some broccoli fresh vegetables i mean i guess if it's a stray cat that's starving to death you could put some turnips in there or something crisp bacon though no floppy bacon here um or cat food i think what i'm gonna do here's my here's my idea now i'm not jackson galaxy and i'm sure people have other advice but here's what I've decided to do because I have overthought the blue hell out of this. Okay, I'm going to put an old towel in the tra in the trap to cover the wire mesh up to where the little plate is that they step on that causes it to fall. So he won't have to step on that wire mesh because I, I hate the thought of his little feet being uncomfortable. And uh, and then I'm going to put I'm going to set it up to where it won't fall. I'm going to rig it so it, the door will not fall. I'm going to do this in the morning. Tomorrow's what, Wednesday? And I'll do it Thursday morning. And I'm going to put wet food in there, which I almost never give him wet food. He loves it. He will do anything for some wet food. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there at the very end where you want it to be. I'm going to put that wet food in there. I will not have, I will have to keep the other cats. I'm going to put it outside, like on the patio. I'm going to have to keep the other cats away. I will not have, be able to let them go out there. And I'll have it set up where it won't fall tomorrow morning and Thursday morning. Let him, hopefully he'll go in there and eat the food, think it's no big deal, you know, like, well, it's kind of weird, but I mean, there's there's good food in there, so we're going to, it's fine, we'll go in there. Friday morning, I'm going to have to be Johnny on the spot. I don't want him in that trap. I don't want him in that trap any longer than he has to be. Hopefully what will happen is Friday morning, I will set it up like normal, except this time it will be set up to fall. Put the wet food in there. Keep the other cats inside. Because if Boop's out there, she'll run in that damn trap. And then if he hears it slam, he, uh-uh. Lolly's smart. He's smart. He is so damn smart. Okay. She laid down. She got tired of, she's done admiring me now. She's not going to adore me anymore. So. And I don't know that I'll get any video of this at all. Now, if I was on the dodo, I would probably have a production crew out there getting it from multiple angles somehow. Because all these people can get, you know, the same shot from two or three angles. How the hell are you doing that? That's why sometimes I watch these videos like, I think this shit's fake. I don't see how they're getting all this video of these, of these uh, rescues or whatever. How are you getting all this video? And how is it all so good? It's not shaky or anything. Anyway, I'll try. if I don't get any video, I'll just tell you about it later. But I'm going to go ahead. Here's what I've thought about doing. Now this, now this vet, I love my, I love my cat's vet. She is wonderful. She uh, spays and neuters strays for a seriously reduced cost to help reduce the number of, you know, cats and dogs, strays. And, uh, she doesn't charge extra for that. She charges, you know, she just charges basically for her the materials and, you know, she makes it as cheap as she can to encourage people to bring them in, bring in the strays and get them spayed and neutered. Um, if, you know, if nothing else, I mean, at least you're not going to end up with more puppies and kittens. And the shelters around here are slam full. They are full. I mean, they have no room for any more dogs or cats. They are just completely full. Um, if you're looking to adopt or get a new pet, now is the time to do it, I'm telling you. And I know it's not just here, it's everywhere. The shelters are so full right now. Oh my gosh. So anyway, she's awesome. 
she does a low cost spay and neuter program and helps people who can't afford spay and neuter you know you can donate and actually i made a wreath and donated to a fund that helps people you know low income families get their pets spayed or neutered if they can't afford it you know helps pay for it so but they were telling me they said you know we normally have a couple of traps here that we loan out to people but we've loaned them out and they never came back uh we we it's sort of the honor system like we let people borrow them with the understanding that they'll bring it back but unfortunately you know, it looks like all the ones that we had are gone. We don't have any more. So here's what I'm thinking. Because I want I want to help them out. Because these traps are like $60 each. Um, but it's a good size. It would catch a big... You could get a big cat in there. It's, it's big. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go ahead, like Thursday night. I'm going to put my cat carrier in the car. And I'm just going to tell him, look, he's in a... Hopefully I, hopefully, I will get him in the trap. He's in the trap. If you can get him in the cat carrier for me to take him home, you keep that trap. You can have it, and you can use it to help other people bring in strays or, you know, whatever you need it for. So that's one, one less trap you're going to have to buy. So I'm going to tell him to keep it if you can get him, and I'm sure they can. They do it. They do it all day long every day. They can get him in that cat carrier. If you can get him in that cat carrier for me to take him home at the end of the day, you keep that trap. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let him have it. And uh, I know they're struggling right now to pay for a lot of the services they've been doing for the community. And um, I'm thinking about doing another wreath and donating the money to them, like sell it for 75 bucks and donate the 75 to them to help them cover these programs. Because I think it's a great thing that they do. And a lot of vets around here don't do anything like that. And, and I just, I want to, I want to encourage them to, you know, try to help them continue to do it. Because I think it's great. Ugh, okay, so I'm nervous about it already. I'm already nervous. Like every time I think about it, I just, ugh. I don't want to do this to him, but it has to be done. So the first thing they'll do is check for a, a chip. If there's, an, and I don't think there's going to be one. I mean, I this he's not even neutered. I don't think anybody would go to the trouble and expense to get him microchipped if they didn't even bother to get him neutered. That's just my thinking, but I could be totally wrong. Check him for a chip. If there's no chip, they're going to go ahead and neuter him and give him all the shots, do an exam, blah, blah, blah. And then I will be able to pick him up at the end of the day. So hopefully he won't run away and never come back. But, and I seriously hope he won't. I don't think he'll do that. I mean, we feed him and he's very food motivated and, and we, we have good food here. So I think he'll come back. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I hope not. But if for some reason he decides that we suck and he never wants to come back, at least he's been neutered and he will have been examined and had some shots and maybe he'll be a little bit better off than he was. So I know when he first started coming here, he was pretty scraggly and looked pretty rough and he's, he's looking like a fine little gentleman now. He looks much better. Oh my gosh. He's so great. I mean, you're great too. You're great too, Evie. I hear Boop out there meowing. Should I go let her in? Hell no. See, the coloring on her chin is a little off-center, so it always makes it look like her chin is, like her mouth is crooked. <laughs> you hear Boop out there? I hear Boop crying. She wants to come in. She's lonely. Should we let her in? No. Evie, what are you doing? I think we should let her in. You hear her? She's sad. She's sad. She's sad. I don't care. Screw her. I'm going to go let her in. <laughs> I didn't get to mow. I left out my lawn mowing pants and socks. It rained the all afternoon and the grass is soaked. I'm going to have to mow later. All right. Boop. Bita. Kitty. I don't hear her now. Hey. How you doing? Hello. He's like, oh, sheesh. Hey, Boop. Hey, Bitty Boop. How you doing? Yeah, those are dirty. I wore them the other day to mow the backyard, and I figured before I wash them, I'll 
wear them one more time to mow the front. But it rained and ruined my plan. Boop! Evie's just like, ah, oh, sheesh. Hey, Beta. Hey. Ugh. What you doing? You sound happy. Yep. You sound happy. Oh, is that good, Kitty? Bonk. Oh, by the way, this reminds me. Somebody asked me in a comment the other day. They were curious to know what was on the ledge back here between the RN Company shampoo and conditioner. Boop, you want to show them? You want to show them what's over there? Normally, she'll jump on down in there. You want some water? I'll do a little trickle of water. There's your water. She loves water. She's just fascinated by water. Any running water, she just thinks is really cool. <laughs> is it getting on you? Drink the tub water, yum. I just cleaned this tub. Okay, so what's over here between, on the other side of R and Company? I have my Kevin Murphy Angel Wash Shampoo and Angel Rinse. And I have my Monday Shampoo and Conditioner. So that's what's on the, that's what's back there. Somebody was wondering what I had back there. And over here, I have my super high dollar Spa Sations Himalayan Salt Exfoliating Body Wash, Renewing, Enriching, and Healthy Skin Satisfaction. I just put that in here. I paid a whole dollar for that at Dollar General because I spare no expense when it comes to my bath products. Cat. And that little thing over there is a little sample of a clarifying shampoo that I haven't used up yet. Is it fun? You bored already? She gets bored very, easel very easily. Okay, I'm we'll leaving on just for another minute, okay? So I probably need to get going, but I want to look at her. <laughs> Boop. She doesn't give a shit. Um, I wanted to give you an update on Wally and let you know that I did make an appointment for him. So Friday is the day. If I can get him in that trap. I think it will help if I put it out tomorrow morning and Thursday morning with wet food in it where it won't fall. And he can just go in there. And I hate to do that to him, but... I got to get him there somehow. I mean, he's he's going to hate no matter what I no matter what I do, he's not going to like it. I mean, no cat likes this they my other cats hate going to the vet too. Um but I can handle them. They're not, you know, they're not like 20% feral like he seems to be, you know, and he just he doesn't completely trust us yet. He may never completely trust us. I don't know. But he if you make a sudden move around him or a loud noise, he just takes off. He's like, "Nah." He's very, very suspicious of everything. He's always on alert. He's He never really seems to relax. He's just constantly on guard, you know. So, poor kid. I just hate it for him. So, anyway, hopefully Friday we can get him to the vet and get him, get him, get his exam, get his shots, get him neutered, get him checked for a chip, blah, blah, blah. We'll, get, we'll just do everything, like all, all of it, like do everything for this cat. So, yay, yeah, we're going to give it a shot. She just sits and watches the water come down after she drinks all she wants. Hey, kitty, 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 kitty. What are you doing, boop? You know, and another thing this vet does, she has um, an adoption program for cats that people are fostering. And she ha they put up on their website cats that they have up for adoption. I think she just does cats. But she has on her website cats that are looking for a home. And she had some cats there in these big uh, cages, like these big, tall, multi-level uh, level cages. She had one in there that looked just like her. <laughs> it looked exactly like her. I said, oh my God, it's Boots' twin sister. 
But she seemed to be a lot more calm than you, kitty. She was just chilling in there. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. She chews on everything. She, when she's bored, she just chews on stuff. I have to watch her in here. She's like a toddler. You have to watch her like a child. Like She'll just chew on stuff and like, stop it. She comes in here and destroys things. So I have to keep an eye on her. <laughs> Cat. You can see the little ref one of the reflectors on her collar there. I put, I think there are two on her collar, especially because she likes to go out so much and she's out at night sometimes and she's kind of a darker color. So I thought that might make her a little bit more visible. Yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. It's getting kind of late and uh, I got some stuff I gotta do. But thank you for being here. I just wanted to let you know that I did get an appointment for Wally. Not you. You're not going this time. You're good. You're fine. She had to go not too long ago and get a the rabies booster thingy. You're good. All right. Whoop. There she goes. Where are you going? Going in the closet. All right. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Happy Tuesday. I hope your week is going well. You're in there meowing at nobody. Yeah, you're all right. Thank you for being here, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you again soon.